Her Excellency the High Commissioner, the Deputy Governor, Bank of Uganda, Your Excellencies, the members of the diplomatic corps here present, CEOs and uh, heads of government institutions from Uganda present, organizers of the convention, distinguished ladies and gentlemen in all your esteemed capacities, good afternoon. It gives me a lot of pleasure to be addressing you at this convention this afternoon. And indeed, I thank the organizers of the convention for giving us a platform, and indeed for giving URA a platform to tell you who we are and to tell you why you need to know us better. Uganda Revenue Authority is the government agency responsible for collecting central government revenue and for administering taxes in Uganda. We are a client-focused organization that attracts and nurtures talent and provides responsive client-focused solutions as we collect revenue to deliver a great client experience so that when our clients deal with us, they live with a very good experience. And we do this in an, in an enjoyable environment. We believe it's important to enjoy our work and that is what promotes the professionalism and innovation that Uganda Revenue Authority has become known for. Therefore, our strong pillars of service are hinged on client focus and responsiveness. We do this by making sure that we provide solutions that are appropriate to each client segment. A solution that we'll provide to a large taxpayer would not work for a solution for a, a small taxpayer. And therefore, each taxpayer segment, we will have a solution that is appropriate for them. We front load the attraction of talent. And therefore, the staff that work at URA are very knowledgeable, extremely competent, and professional individuals. And we nurture the talent by providing welfare, competitive welfare schemes, which go way beyond uh, the salary they take home. And we do this to, uh, to retain the talent that we have attracted. As a result of that, URA has been at the forefront and indeed is a leading agency in government in innovations. Many people come to us to benchmark on the innovations that we have come up with. And as a result, we create an enjoyable environment within which we work, and this is the reason we are able to deliver revenue services with purpose and passion. Our purpose for work, and we know we can achieve it, is to deliver Uganda into self-sustainability. We are already funding our recurrent expenditure budget at 100% out of locally collected revenue. Our development budget is funded at about 66% from domestically reven uh, mobilized revenue, and the rest is coming in from budget support. But we believe we can cut, we can cover the balance in the not too distant future. But we can't do it alone, and that's why I'm here. Because our tagline is developing Uganda together, and I cannot do it on myself or by myself we need help from everywhere we can get it. And that is why it's important for us to deliver strategic partnerships with all kinds of organizations 
that we know are important in the business of revenue collection. And indeed, Ugandans living in Uganda and outside Uganda are important partners in the business of revenue collection. The analogy I like to use is that I am the chief fundraiser of government. And therefore, it's only my role to pass the basket around. But someone must put money in that basket. And I cannot do it. The money has to be put in the basket by everyone that has an obligation to put money in that basket. But I must build the bridges that will enable you to put money in the basket. And I must develop a process and a system that makes it easy for you to comply. And not only easy for you to comply, but enjoyable for you to comply. That makes it not only easy for you to comply, but makes you look forward to complying with your taxes. Yes, it's a paradigm shift, and I know it can happen. URA is a team of 2,394 staff, and we are located all over the country, 36 domestic taxes offices and 37 customs uh, field service offices and enforcement stations in Uganda and Kenya as well. As you may have heard, Uganda and East Africa started a single customs territory, and we have offices in Kenya to administer or implement the single customs territory. Where goods coming in Mombasa, coming into at the, at the port in Mombasa, are recognized as having come into the customs territory, and therefore uh, the revenue is declared and collected at that point. We collect income tax, and income tax is both individual and corporate income tax. Individual income tax is categorized into the tax that you pay on your individual income, but it also includes employment income, rental income tax, withholding tax, especially for those who are in the business of supplying goods and services, local excise duty on locally manufactured goods and services like soft drinks, beers, mineral water, cement, sugar, and all other industrial goods. We collect excise duty on imports. A number of goods are, in addition to import duties, are subject to excise duty. And these fall mainly within the so-called luxury goods, motor vehicles, um, of an age of uh, above five to 10 years will pay an excise duty. And this is what we normally call the environmental levy, but it's actually an excise duty. We collect excise duty on plastics and plastic containers. And this is not only for revenue, but also to protect the um, industries that are making plastics. And lastly, we collect value added tax. Value added tax is a tax on consumption and it is paid by the final consumer of goods and services. I would like to sell a prospect of tax as an enabler for business. And I believe that is the theme of my talk this evening. How is taxation an enabler for business? Taxation is an enabler for business when you take advantage of the incentives and exemptions that are provided in the tax laws in making your investment decision. This requires that you need to know what invest incentives are available in the tax laws and how you can invest in areas that will give you a head start in as far as tax incentives are concerned. Tax incentives are used to promote key sectors of the economy, which the government has decided needs to be um, promoted. I'll give an example of the education sector, which uh, some years back 
the government decided that Uganda is a, an education hub in the region and therefore it was important to attract investment in the education sector. And therefore, the corporate income tax on those investing in provision of education was waived or was exempted. This went on for about eight years and indeed we saw a huge growth in building of schools and other types of educational institutions. And we know that Uganda is leading in the region in the provision of quality education. Tax incentives are also supposed to provide affordability of essential products and services. And this we'll see happening in using incentives, especially in the consumption taxes. You will find that there is no VAT on food, on certain aspects of food, because it's intended to make it affordable. There is no VAT on certain types of medicines because it's supposed to be affordable. Tax incentives are supposed to promote priority sectors of the government. For example, currently we are investing significantly in huge infrastructure projects. And in order for us to facilitate that, we need to give certain incentives to those investing in those sectors. And that is why you will have VAT exemptions on civil works, on major civil infrastructure civil works. To also promote location of industries in certain areas that you would like to see grow. And that is why we have a corporate income tax exempt exemption for those that will put industries in areas outside of the capital city. So one needs to understand the incentives that exist in the law take advantage of them, and that is what I mean by taxation as an enabler for business. I would also like to mention that taxation is an important part of investment. The investment decision will not be complete without including the tax component. Many times we see people investing without considering that they will have to pay taxes. And indeed, after making the investment, the finances do not add up. And that is because someone will have had to pay taxes that they did not plan and project for. So in order for your investment decision to be complete, it must have factored in the taxes that you will pay when your investment return comes in. It's important and that is how tax will enable you to do business successfully and sustainably. Currently, the, kind, the incentives that exist, we have incentives on agro-processing, any investment that adds value to agricultural products, value addition to agricultural products with the intention of improving its value or extending its shelf life. Value addition is the theme. Any process that leads to value addition to agricultural products is exempt from corporate income tax. And that is a significant area for investment and one in which we'd like to see a lot of growth in investment because we believe that agriculture is our forte and we need to promote agriculture but that cannot be complete if we cannot promote value addition in agriculture. And so there is a huge investment opportunity because of that tax incentive. And I would encourage us to take advantage of that. We also need to grow our potential for exports. And therefore we have a tax exemption on the exports of finished consumer goods, which comprise a minimum of 80% of Ugandan produce. 
if you export finished consumer goods, finished consumer goods, whose component of which comprises 80% of Ugandan produce, you will be exempt from corporate income tax. And this is, this is intended to grow not only value addition, but also exports. We need to grow our exports because we cannot have an, an economy that is largely reliant on imports. It is not sustainable for us. And that is another incentive that uh, exists for us. We also have an incentive, again, geared at exports, um, for the export of um, capital goods that have also had an, uh, an input of Ugandan products. So those are incentives that exist that I think can be utilized to grow uh, our export potential. I would like to say something about uh, the informal sector. We have a huge informal sector in Uganda. The figures currently tell us that 52% of our GDP comes from the informal sector. The informal sector is that sector that is economically active but is not regulated because it is informal. It is not doing business in a manner that is registered, that can be kept track of, or that is, we are able to know what they are doing. They cannot be regulated. But they are forming 52% of our GDP. Now, in order for us to realize the benefits of the informal sector, we must deliberately make policies that will formalize the informal sector. And why do I say this at a convention like this? Because a huge portion of our investments are in the informal sector. Many of us are deploying our entrepreneurial skill and resources in businesses that are informal. Yes, we are economically active, but it is not a sustainable way of doing business. And we need to formalize the way we invest in order for us not only to make some money, but to also grow and to grow the economy as well as a result of formalizing the businesses. At URA, we have done, taken certain steps to encourage formalization of the informal sector. We have created simplified mechanisms of paying taxes by those in the informal sector who for one reason or another are not able to file tax returns. We have enabled them to pay their taxes in an easy manner by paying a one-off tax which will sort them out for the whole year instead of asking them to pay taxes, to file their returns, I mean. So that is a step for us to formalize the informal sector. We have also tried to simplify the process of registration by ensuring that whoever needs a license for any type of business will have to be registered for taxes first. So if you need a trading license, if you need a professional license, you need a license to move goods here and there, you need a license to do business with government, you will need to be registered for taxes. And this is supposed to formalize the informal sector so that we can get a hand on all those that are economically active, not only for taxes, but also for other government regulation. And I would encourage that those that are investing uh, take that up. What makes it attractive for people to pay taxes? People must be confident that your tax money is being put to good use. I know many of us hear only or mostly stories of how revenue is misused. But I'm here to tell you that the most part of the revenue is put to good use. For those that have been to Uganda recently, 
you be able to tell everyone else the kind of infrastructure advancements that have been made. These have been made with revenue, domestically generated revenue. We have built hospitals, we have built schools, we have improved the livelihood of Ugandans, providing security, and this is done with taxpayers' money. So I would like to tell you that when you pay your taxes, you'll be confident that it is being put to the right use. Yes, some of it is misused, but there are institutions that are in place to curb that. But my message to you is the messages of the misuse of taxpayers' money should not be the reason you don't pay your taxes. Because we cannot develop our country and no one is going to do it for us. It's our responsibility to develop our country. We do that by paying our taxes. Thank you for listening to me.